Good morning. Welcome to our Restore stream this morning. My name is Rachel Radmore. I'm from the Loughton Congregation. Um, it's a real honour to be asked to share with you this morning. Um, as you may be aware, we've been looking through the I Am series that comes from John's Gospel, where Jesus shares seven statements to reveal his identity and to expand on the identity of God. Um, the Israelites and the following on into the Jews would know the encounter of God with Moses at the burning bush, um, where Moses is trying to work out who is this God, who is this person that I am going to be going back to the um, Egyptians with and saying, release my people. So uh, you may know the story, but Moses encounters this burning bush and is questioning who is God. And God says, I am who I am. And that the phrase of that becomes the Yahweh, which is then taken through their history and into the people standing in front of Jesus at the time. They know God as Yahweh, the I am, the um, never changing, the always present. Um, and so Jesus came to help us get to know more of Yahweh, to see who God truly is in, in human form, but to embody those characteristics of God. So we've been looking at the seven statements of Jesus saying, I am, we've looked at the bread of life, the nourishment each day to keep us sustained in, in our souls and to feed on Jesus. I am the light of the world, the light that comes and illuminates the, the way forward, let alone defeats the darkness. I am the gate, the only way to salvation. And we're looking today at I am the good shepherd in John 10. So if you want to get your Bibles ready, we're going to John 10 later on. In John 14, verse 7, Jesus says to the people in front of him, if you really know me, you will know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. He's saying, I am God standing before you. And let me show you more of who God truly is. There's a whole pattern in John's gospel where the Jesus is performing miracles. Then people are arguing about how dare he, who is this character that's doing these things? How does he have the right? And Jesus follows that up with, I am, and explaining that Yahweh. And the hearers of the time would know that reference of he is referring to the God we know and expanding on it further. So the reference of I am the good shepherd also sits on language that his listeners would know and understand. A little less common for us, um, particularly in our locality right here in London, a little less often for us to come across shepherds. Um, but in the time, his audience, the people around him, his friends, his followers, people who are listening, the crowd that's forming to follow Jesus, would have this clear understanding of what a character of a shepherd is. They would live amongst it, they'd see it, they'd know this shepherding role. It's language that Jesus uses to engage his listeners in what they already know. And I love how God does that, just speaks into in a way that matches up with his listeners. And it's something we really need to take on board for ourselves. Some of this analogy doesn't always work for us. And we need to think, God, show me how I can explain you to the people in front of me in a way they would understand. So actually, there's also a lot of references to God as the shepherd and lots of shepherding references throughout the Old Testament. So the scriptures that his listeners were standing in front of him would know the scriptures that refer to God as the shepherd, leaders as God's shepherds, um, shepherds for his people, people being like sheep without a shepherd, and the prophetic image of the coming shepherd. There's also key characters in the Bible, people they know of, leaders of their faith, who were shepherds first. And I love that, that you've got the likes of Abraham, Moses, David, they all were shepherds first. There's something in God's heart that matches this role of being a shepherd. And it's not a new message that Jesus was bringing to his people, but something that he has been, God's been revealing time and time and time and time again. And Jesus is standing there in front of the audience and saying, I am that good shepherd. But I love, yeah, there's the qualities of a shepherd are the qualities of what make a good leader. 
a challenge to many leaders, I'm sure. But right back, if we go right back to the beginning, Genesis 49 verse 24 is the first mention of um, God being the shepherd. When Jacob is blessing his son Joseph just before his death, he says, Joseph's bow remained steady. His strong arm stayed limber because of the hand of the mighty one of Jacob, because of the shepherd, the rock of Israel. He's like, God is the shepherd right at the start, the first book of the Bible. We've also got the most famous psalm in all of history, most likely, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And David, who came from a shepherd, become a leader, caught that imagery of God being the good shepherd, the shepherd that leads us and cares for us, allows us to have rest when we need it, provides for us. Throughout the Old Testament, we've got talk of David as being the shepherd of my people, the people Israel, God and pointing him to be the leader in a shepherding manner. We've got references of leaders that are not so good, good shepherds that were supposed to be good leaders and carers of his people. Isaiah 56 verse 11, they are shepherds who lack understanding. They all turn to their own way. They seek their own gain. And Ezekiel 34, I'm going to come back to in a minute, but a lot of talk about where the leaders of Israel had not been good shepherds, had gone away from God's design for them in that. Also, a lot of the passages talk about Israel as a nation being sheep without a shepherd and God's desire for people to be led in this way and to be cared for in this way. One example is Zechariah 10 verse 2. Therefore, the people wander like sheep oppressed for lack of a shepherd. And Jesus embodying this in Matthew 9 verse 36 it records that when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. They hadn't gone any further in fulfilling this good leadership of being cared for in a, in a godly way. Loads of prophetic images all through Isaiah, Zechariah, Jeremiah, Revelation about the coming shepherd. So we've got the shepherd in Genesis and in Revelation 7, 17, for the lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. Well, that's, that's a whole Bible study in itself. You've got the lamb on the throne being the shepherd. Loads to unpack there, so we won't do that bit today. What we're looking at today is John 10. Um, if you want to open up your Bibles or on your apps or whatever, we're going to look through it from verse 1 to 16. Now, I know that we've had the talk on Jesus being at the gate. I am the gate. So it is part of our passage. We'll touch on it briefly, but we'll also, we don't want to repeat what we've already heard. If you haven't heard it, go back and have a listen. John 10 comes in our breaking up of the Bible, funnily enough, just after John 9. Um, but th that breaking up is all for our own English language. But actually, previously to this um, being shared, Jesus has healed a blind man on a Sabbath and caused all kinds of uproar by doing that. The Pharisees have then gone and investigated this healing and thought, how could Jesus do this? Who is this man? What has he done? Why has he done it on a Sabbath? They've really interrogated the guy who was healed. They've interrogated his mother because this was a guy that was born blind and saying, was he really born blind? Is this the guy that's now you said was blind and is healed? And they're having this kind of interrogation basically by the leaders of um, the religion there, the Pharisees. But to the point where it ended with the Pharisees throwing this man who had just been healed by Jesus, throwing him out. So out of the temple, out of the area that they were questioning, Jesus then goes to the man and reveals his true identity. And he shows this man that he is the son of God. And of course, the Pharisees are a bit upset by that. So this is where the context of where we jump straight into John 10, right at the beginning, Jesus is addressing the Pharisees. And this analogy of Jesus being the good shepherd is quite an element of explaining to the Pharisees how far they'd got wrong from being the good shepherding leaders of the Israelites and of God's people. There is so much there for us as well, though. So we want to see all the context today. 
So verse 1 in John 10, very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. He's the one who's coming in full authority to step into the right way, lead in the right way. Verse 3, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. And I love this bit. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. There's something there, a little pause for us, there's something there where the shepherd will take time to know each individual sheep, not just by name, but by their character, and invest time in the sheep knowing his voice. Verse 4, when he's brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger, in fact. They will run away from him because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. We, in lovely hindsight, can see clearly what Jesus was saying to them. But what I love here and what we have to grasp is actually shepherding of our day and of our culture um, is very different to the shepherding of the time and the culture then. We probably, if you see kind of videos of contemporary shepherds in the UK or whatever, you've often got them with a sheepdog rounding up the sheep or um, lots of maybe shouting or even herding from behind to try and encourage them to go the right way. The shepherding of the time in Israel at that time was where the shepherd had been spent so much time with these sheep, camping out, you know, travelling together day and night, um, that the, she the sheep know the shepherd's voice and the shepherd leads from the front with the sheep following behind, opening the gate, stepping out, saying, come, come. Very different concept, but one to really hold on to because that brings a whole different dynamic to what God is asking of us. Verse 7, therefore Jesus said again, he's really trying to help the Pharisees see this, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. He is the only way to be saved. Entering through the gate, leading um, as a, uh, authority at the gate, opening it up to us, saying, come into my pen, my pen, be safe in my flock. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. And so often we, some of us may know that verse and refer to that verse when we're in spiritual battles, but it's really important to see that amongst the imagery. We're talking about thieves climbing over the walls of the sheep pen or like wolves trying to jump over the, the pen and over the walls to destroy and attack, to steal the sheep out of the safety of that. And God's saying, I have come to bring you life, that security amongst the flock to protect you and defend you. Verse 11, and this is our key bit for today. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus foretelling what was to come. He was so um, taken in this role that in order to defend for his sheep, a shepherd, a good shepherd, would put his life before the sheep, would do everything in his powers to stand, to fight off, to defend, to the point where he would die before his sheep would be harmed. Verse 12, the hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But our good shepherd will stand and fight, protect and lay down his life. 
And at the time, there was Jesus predicting what was going to come, saying, guys, this is the point it's going to get to. I am going to defend you to the point of my death. Praise God, we know that's not the end and there is a resurrection. But actually, that death has happened. So if you feel you're in that battle right now, and you think, where is God in this? God has already stood there in that battle. He's already defeated death. He has already defeated everything that is coming against you and laid down his life so that you can walk behind him in that safety. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep, and I love this bit, I have other sheep that are not in this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Now that was probably quite revolutionary at the time to be hearing Jesus say that in front of the Pharisees, who where there may have been a culture of we are God's people, we are following the right way, we're following all the laws, we're doing it the way Moses said. And Jesus saying, there is so much more. And you know what? I am not here just for you, and, but I am here for you, but I'm here for everyone. I'm inviting all of these people into my one flock and there's a challenge to us that God is not exclusive for the one set of people, but saying, I love each and every person and I want to call them into my flock. Now, when Jesus was rebuking the Pharisees, there's quite a clear imagery here of good shepherding and poor shepherding. And as I said in Ezekiel 34, we'd already heard these warnings the leaders of the Israelites back then, God was saying, giving a prophetic word through Ezekiel, saying, you're getting it wrong. This is not the design for leading my people. Ezekiel 34, 1 to 6 says, Woe to you, shepherds of Israel, who only take care of yourselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You've not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You've not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You've ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth and no one searched or looked for them. Now, that's a heartbreaking and challenging word Ezekiel gave at a time when the Israelites were scattered amongst the nation, not cared for, not as one flock under protection of their good leaders. But actually, that heartbreaking thing of my leaders have not sought them out. They haven't brought them back. They're not searching for them. And we know the parable that Jesus says of searching for the one lost sheep, leaving the 99 and going for the one. And Jesus saying, my heart is to seek for every one that is lost and bring them back. The people of the time, as I said, would know this imagery of a shepherd and they would know who were good shepherds and who were poor shepherds. They would know the consequences of being a poor shepherd and the, and the fruitfulness of being a good shepherd. And actually, Jesus is really calling out to be the kind shepherd, not the mean one. The actively protecting, always on watch, not lazy. And this is such the parallel of, yes, he's calling on his leaders, but the image of Jesus being that for us at all times as well. He was calling his leaders and declaring that he is a self-sacrificing shepherd, not a self-first. He's a shepherd that is calling, come this way, follow me, instead of having a lack of direction and scattering sheep. He's a shepherd that will feed, provide, heal, rescue, seek out, gather, unite his sheep. Not a shepherd who would hurt, misuse, abuse, punish, rule over, have sheep to bring glory to themselves. 
or flee from danger and abandon the sheep when trouble comes. And he's a shepherd who knows each and every sheep and takes time to know them and wants them to know his voice. In Ezekiel 34, the word from God continues into verse 15 and 16, where there's this prophetic word of who God truly is that now Jesus is embodying. Verse 15, I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. And yet the Pharisees had heard this and hadn't got it. Hadn't got that God's heart was to care and to nurture, protect, heal, restore. Something I also love about the imagery and that the hearers at the time would know is that sheep are pretty dumb. And I'm sorry, if we're in this analogy and we are the sheep, we are dumb sheep. I know I am. If you've YouTubed or like Googled the images and videos of sheep, the amount of brilliant videos that come along of sheep being rescued from a crevice by the shepherd and bounding two bounds straight back into the same crevice. You've got sheep fall in river, sheep get stuck in bushes, sheep wander off, get scared and run. Sheep get lost. Sheep keep doing the same behaviours over and over again that get them into trouble. Sheep need a shepherd. Sheep on their own are in trouble. Sheep are not going to look after themselves. A flock of sheep does not go well on its own. Sheep need looking after. Sheep need constantly rescuing, (laughs) protecting from dangers. And sheep need to constantly hear the voice of the shepherd saying, this way, come, follow me. Good shepherds also know, as I've said, each individual sheep. And I love this. And God really spoke to me about this bit. Because our good shepherd knows each and every one of us. Whether we have shared our hearts with him or not, he knows you. He knows who's hurting. He knows which sheep is going to fall into the river, the crevice, the bush, repeatedly. He knows who will need rescuing. He knows who's been hurt and injured in the past and actually maybe are carrying a wound and is hobbling, damaged, hurt, injured. He knows which sheep are going to be slow at the back of the flock and need gentle encouragement. He knows which sheep are so hurt they need picking up and putting on his shoulder and carried to safety. He knows which sheep need the rest at the right time. He knows which sheep are going to need food. He knows which sheep are not going to get on well together and how some need to be parted from each other for seasons. He knows us as an individual. He also knows us as the collective flock, how this can work. And he's saying, come this way. Come, follow. Because you know the shepherd never gives up. The shepherd seeks and seeks and seeks and he rescues and he heals and he restores. Our good shepherd does that. So however far we've gone or however many hundreds of times we've fallen into trouble and need hooking back out again, Jesus will always come and he will always call, follow me, follow, come, come this way. I love the videos again. I've, you know, Googled some good bits and YouTubed some good bits where there are sheep who will only follow the voice of their shepherd. And it struck me that there are times, particularly at that that culture, there are times where a shepherd would have his flock, but he may well gather with other shepherds of an evening, camp up together, light a fire together, have the flocks all mingle together together. But when the morning comes and they need to move on, they get up, one shepherd standing over this side, one over the other, and they're calling their sheep. And the hundreds of sheep know which voice to listen to 
and follow the right shepherd. That comes by spending time with your shepherd and hearing your shepherd's voice. Do we know our good shepherd's voice? Have you heard your shepherd's voice? Do you listen to it? <laughs> or do we, being dumb sheep, think, I know the way. I'll do it this way. I'll follow my own route. I know, hands up, God, I know I do that. And I want to come before God and say, yes, you've skilled me with gifts and ability, but let me tune in to what you're saying as well. Let me hear your come, come this way. In John 10, verse 4, I've read to us, it says, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. It's all well and good saying maybe we're followers of Christ, but do we follow Christ? Do we listen in all times? And that comes with practice. And for some of us, maybe this concept is so huge, you have no idea what, what I mean. Um, and it can be just stopping for carving out maybe just two minutes. Sitting in quiet, losing distractions can often really help. And just saying, God, I want to hear what you're saying to me. For very few people, but some, may hear an audible type voice. God says, and may hear the voice of God saying, this is the way. Some people may just have a sense or maybe your own thoughts, you feel your own thoughts have gone somewhere and your own voice in your head is saying, have you thought about this or what about that and listen to this or what this and you, you're kind of taken somewhere and you say, if you feel that comes with a peace, then that may well be God speaking to you say, think about this. For some, it's about saying, scriptures may come to mind or, or you're reading something and something really just seems to jump out. And you think, gosh, maybe that's God speaking to me. It could be that you just get a feeling of peace or a feeling of discomfort or some kind of sensation in your body that, that comes with an emotion that may be speaking into what you're talking to God about. For some people, you may not hear anything. And it may be we just need to keep practicing and coming to God. And actually, there are times where it feels like God doesn't speak. But at, there is no lost time in sitting in that moment and asking God to. Because you are calling to your shepherd saying, I want to be in your presence. And it will come. You will get to know your shepherd more. You may need to learn how to tune in to the way that he will speak to you. We are each individuals and God will speak in different ways. Some of us are quite good maybe at hearing God, but maybe we're quite good at hearing God for other people. And we forget to stop and say, God, what are you saying to me, for me right now? For some of us, maybe you're hearing this, maybe you've just stumbled across this YouTube and welcome. <laughs> maybe you found us accidentally and just happened to listen, and I'm really honoured. But maybe you've never known Jesus as your shepherd at all. Maybe you wouldn't even call yourself a follower of God, but this is something that is stirring in your heart right now. And I want to give anybody a chance that says, actually, God, the way I'm living life isn't really working. I could really do with having you speak into my life so I can follow a way that is good for me. So if that's you, all you have to do is stop and say... <laughs> You can use my words, you can turn it into your own way. Say so something along the lines of, God, I know I'm a pretty dumb sheep sometimes and I try and do things my own way. I've fallen into trouble too many times or I'm literally in a mess right now and I need you rescuing me out of this thorny bush, out of this crevice, out of this drowning river. God, be my shepherd. I put my life before you. And I ask you to lead me. Help me to hear your voice and know the way to live for you.
And Jesus, I pray a blessing on everybody whose heart is stirring for that right now. And if that is you, I pray that you will find Christians, good Christians you can connect with, good shepherding leaders that you can come under that can lead you in the way of knowing Jesus more. For me, when I've been studying this, there's been three characteristics of this good shepherd that has really struck with me. I think there are lots of characteristics of a good shepherd, but the three that stuck with me, and I'm a bit of um, an alliteration fan. It's the teacher in me, I'm afraid. I apologise. The three that struck for me were gentle guide, compassionate carer, persistent protector. If you've got a bit of paper and pen nearby, you might want this because I'm going to give you a challenge in a minute. I want us to think on those three qualities. Jesus, as our good shepherd, the gentle guide, is always saying to us, come, come follow me. This is the way that will work best for you. And I would challenge you today to stop and think on all of these three parts. And it may be that one of these parts really speaks for you and you think, God, I need your guidance. There are things in my life I really need answers for right now. There are things in my life I need to know which way to go. I need to be taken out of one path or I need to know the next step. And God may not show you the whole route, but he is standing before you saying, come. Hear my voice. Come this way. So I would say if you've got a bit of paper and pen or if you want to do this later or you want to pause, I would challenge you to take time at some point to think about is there any guidance you need from God right now and just write it down and pour it out with Jesus telling him, God, I really need you to show me, guide me in this or this or this. And God isn't going to come with a stick and whack you and go, no, not that way, this way. That's not the good shepherd. He comes with a gentleness of, come this way, I'll show you. The second category is this compassionate carer. And maybe you're listening and you're thinking, actually, God, I need your care. I need healing. I need restoration. I need provision. I need rescuing. My wounds are hurting. I feel like I'm drowning. I need to rest. I need to go to these green pastures. I need you to take me to safety. What care, what healing, what restoration, what provision do you need from God today? I'd encourage you to write down it. What is on your heart right now? God, I need this from my good shepherd. And a great place to go to is Psalm 23, to soak in that and allow God to speak over you in that. The third part is that persistent protector. And some of us feel like we are such under attack, in such a battle, surrounded by the wolves, trying to attack us, trying to attack our family, our church, whatever it is that you feel under attack. And you have the good shepherd that has already laid down his life to defend you, to stand before you and fight off every enemy. So maybe you need to take time and write down, God, I need your protection right now. I thank you, God, you are my persistent protector forever standing in front of me and defending me. And maybe you need rescuing from addiction, from pain, from past hurts, from attack, from financial strains, for health. What do you need protecting and rescuing from today? Take time to write that down. For some of you, you may have one thing in one box. For some of you, you may have a hundred things in every single one of them. And I would challenge you to either pause this now or go away at some point and take some time and sit with God with your list. <laughs> God really doesn't mind a list. He is your good shepherd who wants to know you. He is desperately wanting you to come before him and say, God, this is me. This is all my mess. Because yes, he's a God who knows and sees everything. But he's a God who loves the relationship. And to spend time with you sitting before your shepherd and saying, 
I need you. This is the mess my life is in. God loves it, so take time. However that looks for you. Just talking to God, writing it down, sharing it with him. And then I would challenge you, even just to take two minutes, find a place of peace and a place of, that's distraction-free and just got to ask God to speak to you on where he, as your good shepherd, will provide for you. One other challenge before I let you go <laughs> is, yes, God, Jesus was talking um, showing us God's character. He was rebuking the Pharisees for not being good leaders the way he designed his leadership to be of his people. He was declaring his death of what was to come and in showing us who God is and his heart for us. But the final challenge that struck me is that we are made in God's image. As followers of the Good Shepherd, we are made in his image to be good shepherds to those around us. So are you being a good shepherd? Whether you're a leader in authority or not, whether you're a church leader or a leader of a family or a leader in business or just you, we are all called to be good shepherds to those around us. Are we gently guiding people in the way God has for them? Are we caring, providing, encouraging, supporting people to find the restoration God wants for them? Are we protecting and defending and um, fighting for those that need us to stand in a godly way and say, I will stand before you because I know my God is in front of me and we will fight this together? And are we inviting and including all people into his one flock. There may be some people you really find hard to do life with. God designed us all very differently, but also we all carry individual hurts and pains that manifest in the way that we behave with each other. But God didn't say, that's okay, you don't need to like those or get on with those, you can leave those people over there. God's saying, no, I have one flock Every person is going to be invited into my flock. And are you being a good shepherd to each and every person you encounter? Maybe we need to sit before God and say, actually, God, I'm sorry for where I have messed up, where I've been a bit of a dumb sheep and got this wrong. Help me to see myself as your sheep before you as my good shepherd and help me to see every person around me as one of your sheep that you're inviting in to your flock. Let me just pray for us and then we'll end our time together. Father God, I thank you that you sent Jesus to reveal your true character, to show us more of who you are and the heart that you have and the life that you have and want for us. God, help us to follow you, our good shepherd. I thank you that you are our constant protector. I thank you that you are our carer, always there to restore and deliver and protect and to heal. God, I thank you that you are our gentle guide standing before us, calling us to come. God, help us to hear your voice, to tune in to what you are saying for us as your individual known sheep. Help us to feel known by you and help us to know your voice day in, day out. And God, help us to be good shepherds to those around us, to care for those and help them to get to know you more as their good shepherd. God, I pray a blessing on everybody listening today. I thank you for the work you are doing in our hearts and I pray for more, Jesus, that we would know you more. And I thank you for this message you have brought with us. I thank you that your word is full of so much truth. 
Help us to get to know you more, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for all that you are doing. And equip us, Holy Spirit, to hear your voice and lead us day in and day out. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you all.